up? It's me, Forrest, and I am going to talk about my time in the Army. It was a very defining moment in my life, uh, the seven years that I served. And I was, I put out uh, Red Lake Volume 1. And it took me some years to write it. I would start, stop, try to write on uh, Google Docs or Microsoft Word or Microsoft Word on my phone. And then eventually I was like, let me just use the notes app. Let me just, you know, type out some quick bars and, you know, just make it real easy. Uh, Cause I've, from a very young age, I've, I've always been a good writer. Uh, that was always uh, a compliment or a thing that was noted on my report card that I could write. And you know, you go through writing, you learn how to write paragraphs and shit, uh, you know, the five paragraph standard or whatever. And then going through undergrad and grad school and it's just really, really structured. So uh, the intent with Red Lake Volume 1 was just to keep it short, uh, just just get the just get the feelings out, uh, per se, and not really care about all those extra things. Because when I was trying to write it, it was like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of voices that I had to uh, drown out of silence once I started typing for my phone. And I got through it. You know, I put the, I put Red Lake Volume 1 out. I was proud of it. And... Instantly, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll just be able to, you know, knock out volume two and that won't be a problem. That would be real easy. I'll, I'll knock it out like I did with uh, volume one. But I started and it was right back to where I was with for the first book. And I was like, oh, snap, here I am trying to started on my phone, not liking it, moving to my Mac, trying to type, and then it's all like, just once again, just not looking forward to the writing process, like not looking forward to having to block off that time, not looking forward to, cause grad school, yeah, I don't papers had to write, like 30 and 40 and, you know, little 10 page pieces here and there or five pages, I just got tired of writing. And I wish I could just tell the story as I see it in my head or what I remember. And that was another problem I was having when I was working on this project. Uh, just between my drug use and the trauma I've experienced, you forget a lot of stuff. Your brain is totally, totally, totally um, blocks out a lot of things. You might not remember a lot of stuff. So it helps to tell stories in a group of people that were, you know, maybe in there because they can piece in uh, the stuff you may have forgot. And so where I left off with Red Lake Volume 1, uh, I was leaving St. Louis. And taking that flight uh, down a lot. But of course, I had, I had a layover in Dallas. Uh, and... That was me, for me to leave, that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, but I had to, 
as I expressed in those last, like last few pages in, in the first book, because being my baby mama just couldn't, like we just couldn't make it, like the Rubik's crew, we just couldn't figure each other out. And my kids had to see that shit, you know? My kids had to see just my anger, uh, our fights, and even because I was I was very safe with uh, my ex-wife slash the mother of my children when I wrote Volume One. I took on a lot of I took on a lot of ownership i was just making it seem i was not seem but i was pretty much taking like yo i did this shit i was the main perpetrator i was the main aggressor but we men can we get triggered too we get gaslighted too and our anger and our rage when it comes out it comes out ugly and I hate it. Uh, so that's what it did. Yeah, I, me and my me and my baby mama used to fight. Um, yeah, we used to fight. Yeah, I hope I I got that feeling right there. I hope I put that. I was able to, you know, kind of get that feeling in the book because I guess. You know what I know about myself and how I deal with rejection, uh, how I deal with being emasculated. Um, I'm not a fan. And at, you know, 19, 20, 21, 12, what, till 23 when I left for the Army, having all this shit like happen to you and you not know how to deal with it and you're trying to figure yourself out. You're trying to figure out this person that you went out. Hey, you know, young kids too. So trying to figure them out and how it worked out. It was a lot. And so the stresses of life got to me. And of course I wasn't a fan of my mom. So a lot of that, like, yeah, baby mama reminded me of my mama. Well, yeah, I had to, I had to leave, I had to leave, got that rejection from St. Louis Police Department and, and then right back at Barnes. And that was a very humbling experience in my life. And that's why I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta do the army. So I got, um, I don't remember, like, yeah, I don't even remember the dude's name that I uh, shipped off with. I just remember he was a white dude from the Southern Illinois area. He was a Cardinals fan. So we got along on that, on that aspect. So I kind of wish I had like a camera at, around me at that time to, to film all that. And I've had to watch YouTube videos of people going to basic training to kind of just remember all that stuff. But yeah, I took uh, that flight from St. Louis to Dallas. And then Dallas to Lawton, and this was 2005. See the music I was listening to, of course, uh, Jeezy's, The Motivation 101, Little Brother, The Listening, man, that, that album was so fire.
and I had a I had an iPod. I had like a second generation iPod. iPod. <laughs> iPod. Um, I don't even remember. Probably had a flip phone. I don't even know if I took. I, 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 I that's the thing about memory. I don't remember all what I took. And I think we had a layover in Dallas slightly. I remember taking the shuttle to, like, because Dallas airport is, is big. So you take the shuttle to your flight or whatever. And we got on, it was one of those, uh, what, twin inch? I don't know. One of the planes with the propellers on it. And just get on there. And I like to think I made small talk with oh oh dude. And we fly into Lawton. And it's funny, yeah, October 12, 2005. Flying into La yeah, yeah, flying into Lawton. Fly in, get off the flight, go grab your bags. There's a drill sergeant to, I think it was like a National Guard drill sergeant. Yeah, they'll have National Guard drill sergeants just to do stuff, um, pick up, you know, soldiers or receiving or whatever. And from there, that's when I, I, I was just pretty much doing what I was told. Hey, go get my bags. All right, go get my bags, waiting on you. Well, you know, you know, everybody's confused. It's like, all right, we're just kind of, kind of here. You go from getting your bags, and then we get lined up. So I don't even remember. Uh, the color of the drill sergeant and the guy is, but I'm just gonna assume he's white. <laughs> and he told us, yeah, and I'm piecing this all together because y'all yeah, remember that shit. Got our bags, got on the bus, got a stern welcome to Lawton, Oklahoma. I think we had to do a count. And then turn off the lights. Go on the ride from Lawton Airport to uh, Fort Sill. Jurists are most likely checked. Like, yeah, because when you go through any army installation, any army post, uh yeah, he was probably checked in the front gate, let him know, hey, these some you know recruits gave him the count. Yeah, he's, I think we gave a count. I don't know, but he definitely have a count. There's yeah, there was a count. Uh, a count from front to back, counting off, and somebody probably yeah definitely messed it up. But yeah, get a count to do with the game, go through, and then from there, um. <laughs> you just yeah you go through the gate and then the bus comes to a stop and it's not like the marines so i and i thought that from jump somebody was gonna hop on the bus and just start yelling and just yelling go 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 you're at port seal home to feel artillery it's papa whatever and there's no yelling Dr drill got on the bus Let us know what the deal was. Introduce himself. Welcome to, you know, to Homer Field Artillery for Seal, Oklahoma. And we got off. Had my stuff, my bags. He took us to a room and we filled out some paperwork. We had our packets, filled out some more paperwork. Uh, and they were gonna tell us, hey, yo, we're gonna go to the amnesty room. And the amnesty room is where you could just anything that you were not supposed to have, you could drop it off in that room. 
And with that, close it out. So I would say look forward to these upcoming episodes. I'm gonna piece together the story. Uh, we'll see where it goes and holla.